All right, all right. Today we're getting a very volatile day, so I wanna do an intraday update. Before the market closes, hopefully you'll have time to see this because after the bell, we are getting some big earnings reports. We are going to get Amazon, Apple, Intel, Coinbase, DraftKings, Roku, Block, and Marathon. But most importantly, we're getting Amazon and Apple, and these are market moving names, and we are seeing a lot of volatility going into the earnings. And if they do not beat on their earnings, it is going to be very difficult for bulls to come back from a red candle like we're having today because if I close this out and I show you we are getting a bearish engulfing candle and we are still near the low of the day as I'm recording this so if the bulls do not balance it near the end of the day and get back above the risk level this looks like everybody is running for the door and these are the kinds of price action indications you want to be paying attention to if you are looking to get risk off and risk off means you're either reducing long exposure or starting to accumulate some short positions because there is that bearish scenario I told you we could never fully rule out was that we were going to get a lower high rejection and then come down for that next leg lower. Now, I still think this was the lowest probability chance, but that doesn't mean the probability is 0%. As always, we need to respect all of the scenarios. And of course, we still do have this 100% guarantee gap fill at 537. So there's also the possibility we're just trying to go down and fill that gap. But one thing I always try to remind you is that when a market is getting risk off, nothing changes sentiment faster than price. And if everybody is getting nervous and running for the door, whether it's warranted or not, price does all of the talking on the chart. And if price is going lower and breaking through critical support and putting in a lower low after we get this lower high, that is not something you should be ignoring. So just be aware of that. And it's also going to be very difficult to know how earnings are going to impact tomorrow's price action because there is still the possibility we don't break to new lows. And then after the earnings, we could totally reverse this and then continue higher. So I'm going to make this video update very quick because we don't have a lot of time before earnings. And I want you to have time to digest this information and decide how you want to adjust any trades that you currently have. So first, we need to acknowledge the bear scenario is that we just had a lower high rejection and we're coming down here towards about 527. And from today's price action where we currently are that's still about another two and a half percent drop and from the all-time high that would be about a total pullback of anywhere between six and seven percent now we could go lower and that means we would be risk off below 538 so instead of focusing so much on this gap fill i'm just going to add a new risk level here at 538 and if we break below 538 that is the lower high into the lower low and at that point if you are still bullish you are going to be taking on a lot of risk in this market because at that point, if we do break 538, we will have lost the bullish support trend line. We will have lost the support of the previous lower low. And if we make a brand new lower low from a lower high, that is really when you can start to get that panic selling and high volume fear. And when you get high volume panic selling, things can be irrational to the downside and we could go way lower than anybody expects. So please take this seriously. I am not trying to scare you. I am simply trying to make a video so that you could be prepared for this because any experienced trader who has been through a bear market or a deep correction can tell you these are not price action indications you want to ignore. And because of the earnings reports, this could be a bear trap if we don't actually break down to new lows. But if we do break down to new lows, that is just not something you can ignore. And that is why I'm telling you now have a plan in place and do not rule out this bearish scenario of the lower high rejection if we break to a lower low. That will be 100% objective and even bulls that were buying the dip are going to need to reduce risk because that is part of managing risk and having a risk management strategy no matter what. You never ignore price action on a chart. So 538 is that last chance to be bullish. We could go down towards the gap at 537 but by then we've already broken down to a lower low. So this level is going to be 538 and then of course if we were going to be bullish we need to see the bulls either holding this support or at least trying to rally back higher above 544 and we did close that gap at 547 so we can delete that as well so i think this is a very simple chart it's going to come down to whether or not you can take out the emotions and do what is necessary you cannot fall in love with your trades if you were a bull and you were long and you were getting excited during the bounce and you didn't lock any profits this is just a bad day and you need to learn from it but that is why i always suggest locking profits as we hit resistance zones and there is no doubt we were at the top 
of that range between the gap fill at 552 and the top of the range between 555 and 556. It's a lot easier to lock profits and then just get back in if we get the bull breakout than it is to see all of your profits disappear overnight. And that's why I love trading instead of investing because you can move like water. And that is exactly what I want you to focus on doing here is move like water. If you're bearish, you're already likely positioned correctly and you don't need to do anything unless we break out to that higher high above 555. But if you're bullish, you really need a contingency plan right now if we break below 538 and continue lower. So I wanted to do the majority of the information on SPY. I'm going to go through the rest of the indices very quickly, but I'm not going to put the same level of detail. I'm just going to give you the critical levels. So on the NASDAQ 100, it is the same exact thing with the triple Qs as SPY. We are getting this sort of lower high rejection look, and we haven't yet broken down to a lower low as of the time I'm recording this. And the critical support here is going to be right around 454 to 455. If we cannot hold this support zone, that is a lower high into a lower low, and then we will be looking for that lower target at 446 and 436. But as I said with SPY, we have no idea once the high volume selling picks in how much fear we're going to have. And if we get high volume panic selling i'm not trying to call a bottom at that point we are just simply risk off until the chart allows us to buy again or continue to short the downtrend as we get to resistances and continue to work the price action on the chart. So making this very simple, we are not getting bull in the NASDAQ 100 unless we can clear back above 473. You can be buying the dip down here, but you need to understand these are your last chance to get low risk entries. If we break down below about 454, that is risk off and risk off means we are putting no limits on how low we can go. Risk off means get the hell out and don't take any unnecessary risk. And that is 100% going to be objective if Qs break down below 454. So I'll call it 454. You can use 455 or 457. But at the end of the day, this zone is a very tight range. Any of those numbers will work just fine. Just make sure you respect how much more downside we could have if we cannot hold support here. On the Dow Jones, we're currently right around 402. And this is another risk level right around 402. But I like to use it down here right around 398. If we can't hold 398, even the Dow Jones is going to look risk off because then it looks like we had a double top breaking down below the neckline. And once more, if we get these conditions, it is a big if because I don't know until we see it, then these are risk off looking charts and we're not putting any limit on how far down we can go. So once more, we have not yet got the condition. It could happen overnight after earnings or we could completely reverse the selling. I'm not guessing on what's going to happen. We're simply going to react and then we have the critical risk levels to pay attention to. And in the Dow, I'm going to be using three. If we do hold support and we bounce, then it's still completely fine. We go higher to the all-time high price target at 415. But again, that is not the case if we get risk off. And then finally in IWM, we are currently sitting at the bottom of the range at 216, right on top of the rising 20 daily moving average. So once more, I'm not telling you that we have to go a lot lower. This is possible. We find support here. But if we can't hold this support zone at 216, we do have that gap to fill down there right around 211 and the previous breakout at 210. And it would make complete sense if we get rejected here and we can't hold this support that we do go down for that next leg lower between 210 and 211. Now keep in mind, IWM hit the price target. So a lot of this really is just profit taking from bulls that were waiting for that price target at 228 and then locked profits. But once the selling pressure begins, you never know exactly how long it's going to last, especially when the bears are piggybacking on the selling pressure from the bulls and trying to drive it even lower. So pay attention to 216 and IWM and it is okay to get risk off below that. And again, we have no idea how low we're going once we get risk off. That is why I'm calling it risk off and not trying to tell you exactly where we're going. We could go as low as the market wants it to, especially if we start to see high volume panic. All right, so I'm going to cut the video there. I didn't want to make this too long, and I think it's already getting long at this point. All I'm trying to say is respect the fact that we could be getting risk off. And if we get risk off, we can no longer say this is a bull market until price proves it. And we are very close to being able to say that we're going a lot lower if these risk levels fail across the board. I just showed you the four major indices and how they are all knocking on the door of very critical risk levels. So take it seriously. Have no emotions. Move like water. Have a trade plan that is 100% objective and based on price action. And always manage your risk. Risk. A lot of you are finding that out the hard way because you're still trading call options and put options and getting caught on the wrong side of the moves. Options trading is very dangerous. There's way too much leverage for how you guys are trading those. And that is a completely different topic for a different time about risk management. Right now, I want you focusing on the price action and focusing on how serious this could be if we do get the bear breakdown. One final reminder, after we get the earnings, it is completely possible we don't break down and we do put in higher lows and we don't break these lows. But obviously, looking at these big bearish candles that we have today, it is not looking great for the bulls at this current point in time when I am recording this video.
video. So I'll be giving more intraday updates and technical analysis and trade ideas along the way in my Discord server. So if you want those intraday updates and technical analysis live as I am posting them, that is going to be in my Discord server and you can find out how to join my Discord server by clicking on the link in the description of this video. So thank you for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.